Good evening, everybody. I'm a few minutes early. I'm sure that's not a problem. I'm just trying to sort the chat bits and pieces out. And that's all good. So, how's everyone today? We are doing a stream um, in place of Rasta and Nannybot tonight because uh, Rasta's busy and can't get much done today. I think Nannybot's also working. So we're going to quickly jump in and do a painting stream. But it's Monday. It's Monday. Um, yeah, Jack, it's strange, isn't it? Um, there's going to be a bit of bouncing back and forwards between us for the next uh, week, week and a half, two weeks, three weeks, what? while Rasta uh, has stuff to do. So unfortunately, you get to see me a lot more for the next couple of weeks. So, uh, and then when Master's back, he can take some of the workload as well. And we will, as I say, get some bits and pieces running differently. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, I'm trying to look through uh, some of the bits and pieces. Uh, yeah, that's all of their stuff coming through. Perfect. I'm just checking that we're streaming to the right places and onto the right bits and pieces. What we're going to be painting tonight, while I'm trying to multitask, is I've got a box of shame. Hello, Van. Uh, back to my channel. Da -da 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 -da. I pressed wrong buttons. No, Jack. Um, I might be, the mythos was planned for possibly Wednesday. I have just been a bit of a slacker and not managed to get um, it all primed and ready to go. Cool. Everything's working. Sorry about that. I've, it's been a bit of a rush. Uh, I spoke to Rasta about an hour ago. Hi, Clive. Um, and... Uh, yeah. More content from me. We are also going to be doing bits and pieces as and where we can. Uh, we would like to announce something if I can actually get it to work. So, some of you know we have been doing the Imperial March for, this would be our second year. Um, as you know, I do a few charity things during the year, but with COVID and all of that sort of stuff, it has been a bit lacking. So, what we are going to do is... Uh, I'm hoping this just blanks me totally off the page. That can't be right. Did I press? Oh, that's all right. Which one did it go into? 
not that one. That one, cool. So we've done the Imperial. Hey, Bean, I've still got some cards for you, by the way. Uh, so what we are going to try and do, whether it kills me or not, is on the 25th of September, we are going to do a 24 hour charity stream in aid of PSP. It's a charity that Beanie's um, asked us to support after last year's uh, Imperial March, and we promised them that this year would we would run an event at Beanie's for uh, the, the Imperial March and PSPA. So what we've said is we would do something this year, and the best thing that I could rack my brains with is 24 hours of me jabbering like an idiot probably to the point of sitting in the corner in here drooling a lot um, but that is going to start going out we've got eight weeks to prepare for it so if you're a store owner or anything like that expect to be hit up for stuff uh, Kate I'm going to ask um, some questions of you tomorrow I want to get some Protec are going to pay for the cards, so we want some cards doing for the charity. Obviously, Imperial March on the back and something on the front. The artwork will come from Zoe again, so Zoe is going to draw us something uh, in the next week, and then we get some cards made, and also a one-off signed A4 piece that we will... Um, what's it called? auction off again for Clive to win as usual <laughs> um, but yes we're going to be doing that in approximately seven or eight weeks um, uh, yeah I, I might actually watch that let me just click on that and I will pause it so uh, yeah cheers for that um egan i'll uh, i'll have a watch of it there's a few on there goober town hobbies um yeah there's a few come up so yeah it was off i can't remember who it was uh <laughs> yeah um i i think 24 hours for me at the moment would be a pretty good one um maybe it's next year see how i feel maybe do a, a longer one but yes uh again it's a great charity it's very it's a personal charity for Ooh, thank you care um so yeah it's it's a charity that um is, is very personal to beanies and i said i would help out as much as i can Yeah, I'm punchy after about two hours, mate. <laughs> You're going to be in for a treat. Um, we're going to start it at seven o'clock at night, so um, it's not pitch black when I'm finishing it and stuff like that, so I can get some uh, fresh air into the room. Um, the place that I'm doing it, we may go to single lighting during the night and stuff like that. We've got loads of plans. Again, Foxy who is just doing deliveries for me, he's an absolute gem, that lad, um, is going to be dropping um, by on and off to try and keep me awake. Um, and I'm going to try and second some of the uh, T-Squadron a lot to uh, come onto Discord. And I've got a few plans, but I've got between now and then to actually get the systems working. We did see if I can show it without breaking up. So we actually got TTS working last night. So this is the TTS stream. Um, so there's going to be, Dale's going to be whooping through the air because we now know how to capture TTS. We just need a system um, where I don't have headphones that work with this. I've got silly amounts of pennies worth of Bose headphones and they just don't work for this. They, they won't connect. Uh, so we're going to be getting some of that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jack, very much. Uh, 
so I've never used headphones for any of my live streams because I've got a really good mic set up. I don't have the speakers running because I've never needed to till now where I'm going to have to try and import some sounds in from Discord without affecting the mic, without affecting notifications. Yeah, we'll work it out. But um, I'm really excited about it, if you can't tell. We're going to have giveaways. Part of the giveaways is going to be a 25 sealed envelope wall with prizes on all of them. So you'll pop along to the ProTech web store. You'll get a drop down box um, of one to 24. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can't buy two number two sort of thing. You will make the, the purchase, which will be a 10 pound donation. And whatever's behind that, um, number like we're nicking this from James um, from the comic book shop uh, the only side of this is James does it to um, to boost his, his sales and stuff like that we will literally be putting behind these boards what stores have given us because we're going to send out emails this week again Foxy the Superstar has helped us with a lot of uh, emails to go out um letters asking people stuff we we had offers last year already of bits and pieces uh, for the next one we did so we we've probably even got if i remember rightly there's a box in the loft in the garage space that's already got some stuff from last year so we're already on the roll sort of thing um which is which is really good because it's going to be a bit of fun and hopefully uh, at the end of it yay hello there we weren't talking about him um, and hopefully we'll have a good laugh use lot will get some nice shiny prizes and yeah it'll be an interesting 24 hours so if you see this sign kicking about for the next couple of days or the next couple of weeks then you know what it is and we're going to be uh, pushing that quite a bit. I did have my badge in the right place. So, tonight, a um, couple of things. We don't have a giveaway yet for tonight. Uh, thank you, Jack. I did like doing it as well. Um, I have got a box of shame here. I'm not going to net mention whose it is, because that's just not right. Um, let's just switch to painting. So these are some of the bits and pieces from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, there's quite a few bits in here and I know there's more bits in a collection. So a bit of a deal that I'm doing is I'm going to be painting these for a friend. Um, and that friend has been helping me a lot lately. So what do I paint tonight? Um, I think I could probably get one done, ish, um, or a lot of one done. So we had a, did we have a vote for it last week? What did we vote for? Can we remember the vote? And before Jack says it wasn't Spider-Man, I know it wasn't Spider-Man. <laughs> We've also got another treat, and Jack's already been playing with these, is we, while we figure out who was who, we've picked up a set of the Fugazi. Fug, Fuga, I'm probably, <laughs> that's right, it, was, it wasn't Space Wolves, Clive. I'll do some, I've got some Indomitus, I'll do some Space Wolves for you. I promise. Um, so we've picked up Asgard. So, did I just break a... No, I didn't break a brush. Asgard. There's not many Asgard in there. Asgardians. Is it Asgardians or just Asgard? Yeah, 
du, 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 du. Card. It's definitely a Thor. Why can't I see? So we've got Thor. And I'm sure Valkyrie was here. There's Valkyrie. There's... Uh, you know what? I couldn't say Loki for looking. So that's the four. Is there a fifth? Because a lot of the teams have five in. Or has it not been... Yeah, they've not put anything up on there. Mm. Yeah, we'll go. we've got those four for now. <laughs> I'll do that soon. Because there's definitely a spidey in there. What I've just found. I found my switch. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've still got these two to finish off as well. <laughs> nice one, Bean. Um, and I saw your uh, Necrons today, by the way. Okay, they were pretty, pretty smart. So, I've done a Thor. Why, why have I done a Thor and not a Valkyrie? So, go with the big one first. Yes, just come and get them, Bean. Before I eat them all. Um. <laughs> I've not done a Valkyrie yet. So let's do the Valkyrie. <laughs> How did you get stuck in Scotland? I'm just doing that because I haven't got the extra wide um, base things for it. Actually, that's not so bad. Jack, I'm going to show you pinning again. They're, they'll never last in a little Saturday. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing Marvel Crisis bits and pieces for... Um, Basically, fill-in ones where we haven't managed to get anything planned. I've got a box full of Marvel Crisis that I'll be working on, so I might as well. <laughs> I'm not saying whose models these are. <laughs> But this is a perfect time to demonstrate pinning. So, what we've got is um, 
and I've never been able to find these since buying one so and I don't have much of it left I'll probably be making myself um, but this is a, this is just the GW pin vice um, this is a brass rod and this is a perfectly matched brass rod drill bit um, these were done by privateer press and some of the models that you do for um, Marvel Crisis do really benefit from being pinned down even if you only just do one so you get the main one and <laughs> I've got no idea who this is honest so that definitely goes to that sort of point there. And with it not being a specific point, um, you get away with just drilling. And it, obviously with it being a single point, I get away with drilling the hole. I'll move. Wow. I do have spare ones of these, Foxy, so if anything ever happens, don't worry about it. Not that this would be yours or anything. So, yeah, as quickly as that, um, super glue. It doesn't take much, just a little drop on the end. So what I tend to do is, with a good pair of pliers, get near the glue piece and... push it in. And that's pretty solid. Um, you're then going to have a couple of mils through so I've got an old no I don't have an old set I have an old set of cutters that I use for broken like where I know I'm going to break stuff and just about there holding both sides snip it the brass is quite easy to cut through so you've got a little tab there push it real good <sighs> I miss you Bean so once you've got that quickly try it in place see if it's going to go in ok so drive fit it line up where you want it to go on the model right onto the base give it a good coat looking at remove it then put some on the actual peg and then some on the two base bits and then everything should just fall into place quite nicely And then it takes a couple of seconds to go and set. And there we go. All fixed for whoever it belonged to. Uh, what I'm going to do is switch glasses and have a look at. Oh, they are my good glasses. <laughs> so, is there any mold lines kicking about? Yeah, a little. A little divot. These are normally pretty good. 
kits there's not normally a lot of more lines or a lot of um, stuff to clean up on them I've not had a bad one yet uh, I have had night models that have been fairly interesting to to fix up so a little bit down there <laughs> so the majority of Hella <laughs> Hella is um, black, but the wispy bits are. Um, I think we're going to use the new GW Glornet. Hiya, Ian. Um, it's Hella from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Sorry. Uh, I didn't see the message come through on... It didn't come through on the multi-stream. Strange. Thank you for the hosting, Doom Fairies. Are you guys on tonight, by the way? I'll uh, possibly do a raid on you if I remember. So, yeah, it seems pretty, pretty clean. So, yes, uh, another a bit of a tip. So, I'm s sat now thinking of how and where and what I'm going to paint. So, at the moment, I'm going to go to the medium bright. So this, in fact, let's have the close. So all of this is wispy green smoke that goes all the way up. And the main body is black with what I would class as um, something like modern or green or something like that in all of the accents to the uh, armour or the suit and then some hints of black and green across the top so it's black with a green uh, brushed in or blended into it so um, and this prop this would help this will help Jack a bit understanding um, how I choose what colour to start with so where we've got all of the colours here we've got a black and a white normally you would do the white because it's the it's the hardest one to spray and then you go over um, the rest of it in like the black base coat so what I tend to look at is if that's the case how easy is it to get the to get in to do the black if it's really hard to get in to do the black, um, I would tend to do the white. Uh, the black is the main one, and then go in with the Ulfan grey and stuff like that, and build the white up into the the glowy green colours. Um, still white. Green off the sword, green off that. I would probably, and this isn't an easy one. Right, I'm going to prime it black to start with. I don't know what's going on with my that side today. Got a whole new light set up, and it's still not. It's still picking up the uh, the green screen fuzziness. Yeah, 
through that first, see if it's okay. Yeah, that should be fine. So the usual thing it is just badges, um, primer, the styro res, style styro res. And I'll just do this back from the table a bit. So this is a very light coating of black. Uh, it's the other thing that you get the advantage of with the airbrush is the primer can go on super thin and super controlled. So all black. Um, I've just realized I've got rid of a door out of my uh, off my table. Because I've put a set of drawers in there, now I've got no plate to empty my airbrush on. So, just a standard plate. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and pick out some of the white. Uh, and then I can go back into it with the green. I think giving the new GW um, green a go over the top of it might be interesting. So this is their new Tesseract. Which is a bit apt. Tesseract Glow. So I think giving that a go. Yeah. I'm obviously going to wait for it to dry. This is just air. Give that a second. I just realised I do really need to uh, shake this Tesseract glow. So what I'm going to do is I have a small pack of um, agitators. Been using these massively. We've got them on the web store. So these are um, glass bead agitators. Uh, for this size pot, I'm putting three in, especially with the amount that this needs shaken up because as you can see, it's still got quite a bit of the, the stuff at the bottom. And they just help massively. Here's an idea. Um, as Foxy is going to be helping me um, do the charity event and stuff like that, can anyone think of stores, places to hit up, or places to ask uh, for donations for the giveaways? If you can think of anywhere, stick them into the chat, and me and Foxy will pick them up and. Uh, 
drop them a message or an email. So, I'm going to drop the pressure down quite considerably. And then I'm going to... It doesn't need to be much. What I am going to do is... Get a piece of cloth. Because um, every time I've done this, I've ruined a painting mat. So. Good evening, Dale. So I'm just trying to get the areas where the green whiskey bits are going to be. Don't worry about hitting the black areas again because a lot of the black was really easy to get to with a brush. So just getting the wispy bits. And as much as you can, you don't have to get them all because with it being wispy it'll go from dark to light anyway but as everyone knows painting painting black over white is really easy painting white over black is interesting That's where I'm gonna see, sorry, that's where I'm gonna see it from. And is it, no, that's not. And wispy all the way up to there. Get the back of the hand as well. So, there we go. Yeah, we've got, we have got, like you can see there, we've got um, white on the black area, but we can just clear that off with uh, a decent sized brush because it's easy to reach places. And that's now cleaned. And 
paintbrush is done for tonight. So, um, I'll switch back to that. I can go to there. So, one of the things that uh, as I said, we picked up this week was the new Broken Toad Synthetics. Um, these are a cheaper version of the uh, really, really, really good um, Kolonskis. We've been playing around with one for um, a few weeks now, maybe longer. And for certain jobs, I'm actually really enjoying using them. They are the Fugazis. Um, I still love the Broken Toad original stuff. The Kolonsky stuff is phenomenal. Uh, but this also means that I can mess around with the oils a bit more. I didn't want to go using the Kolonskis on my oils. So I've just got the primer, a bit of the primer for the brush. And then all I'm going to do is start going around where um, I've overspread. That's it. It's easier to coat this way around. I'm putting black down where the white overspread is. Then the other way. And then obviously, once this black's down, we'll also be coating, it'll get a glow effect on the actual floor, slightly. Um, so, there we go. So how many people have picked up and started painting Indomitus? I know Van was. I saw him building some figures today. <laughs> There's no such thing as wrong colours, Snowy. And good evening. I wanted to do a pink uh, Hulk, but <sighs> apparently Bermuda shorts are in this season. So. I'm just swapping to a brush with a little bit smaller so I can get into the, the gaps. I think I saw some of your figures getting built today, Snowy. serious lag on my uh, comments coming back to you. T 
tooth in court. It also gives me a good reason to get the Tesseract colour a go. Because I've got it at the weekend and I've been meaning to try it on something, but there's just been nothing. So a bit of the cloak as well. That's got overspray on it. I'd probably do some um, green shading with the airbrush towards the end of the cloak once it's done. It's a green cloak in total, but it gets darker to the edge for some reason. to the black um, yeah it's not that bright a green You'll infuriate snowing. We had tacos tonight, well, this afternoon, so homemade tacos. I've missed. I fancied the Chinese last night. I just had eaten too much bits and pieces while driving to really appreciate getting one in. On that green, then I can get the silver over the top of it. So that is the, where's the other? So the bits, the greens going into the mix with that anywhere. That's going to be that. So give that a second to dry. A 
Martin, Paul, are you streaming tonight, Big Bearded Beast? Um, so this is Hella, um, one of the Asgardians from the Asgardian vote that we did last week. So, I'm going to be using the new, any second now, the new Tesseract Technical Glow. Um, I was led to believe it will work like a wash. And pool, it is very runny, so... It will pull in the recesses. So I'm going to do this and then I can touch back up with the black if I get it anywhere where... Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Got to hand it to them when they do some of their technical stuff the contrast the technicals some of it just does what it says on the tin tuesday and friday okay um i was just gonna pop over to you and uh do a raid if you were doing tonight but if not that's fine <laughs> So anyone wanting to do the wispy bits on Hella, um, I would suggest getting the new Tesseract paint. It's uh, pretty much doing most of the work for me. Um, that's cool. But it, I'm putting it on like um, it's actually staining the black, so that's going to be quite uh, no worries. It's going to be quite nice to see it over black. I might have a feeling it's going to give the glow that we want. Which definitely giving the. Uh, the effect of like a recessed washed bright glowy green except I've got some bubbles 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 in that one so if GW keep making stuff like this and other companies keep coming out with really cool toys to use everyone should be easily able to do paint fully painted armies in no time you can see it's it's already doing the shading for you that's really cool that tesseract Now I've just got to think of other things to use it on. Night haunts. And a luminous green night haunt army. So you saw all I've done is I airbrushed that in white, which you could paint in white and then I've touched up the black to get it to um, the colours that I need and then all I'm doing is loosely painting this tesseract glow over it um, it should stain the black a little bit to give a bit of a glow effect
So what I'm going to do is, because obviously I'm going to be painting this grey, I'm just going to see what the coverage is like when it um, dries like that. So I'm working it round. Ooh. That could work as uh, goo as well, Martian goo. You know what I want to do. I want to put that through the airbrush. Bad man, stop it. Um, then. Uh, so, I need a matching green to that. What greens have I got that could match? Lupricol? Yeah, I think uh have I got my other lubricant? Oh that might work. Nocturne. Lupricol green in the airbrush range. Sons of Horus. Lupricol. I can't remember how how well this stuff paints. stuff right up oh, splashed hmm. so that really does look uh, again we're just gonna try it like that so what's the new GW base colour lubricant look like because as you can see that's going on fairly thin it should take quite a few quarts and this is still the same so it must be the same paint and they've just rebadged it it looks the same colour so a couple of quarts isn't a problem dry and then just highlight the the raised areas it really does match the green as well as the lower colors
got my super close up glasses that I should have been wearing. Hi, Jack. to be that green. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad colour to do it in. You definitely see it coming. I love the way it's just settled in the recesses, like it, it's a wash or a contrast paint. It's just it's done everything for me. I have missed a couple of bits like so once I've done the greens I will go back and pick those bits up right need to get right in the back oh, there's some of the green strap material up there as well that's going to be an interesting one so these handles by GW and any of these makeshift handles that just allow you to hold the model in any angle and stuff like that are absolutely amazing so I normally use the GW ones and I've got a rack of 12 over there all with stuff in at the moment um, Hello. needs one of the bigger ones because of bear size um, so I've just got blue tack on an old GW hex pot does the trick a lot cheaper but uh, I don't know because the amount of blue tack I go through is quite scary so ah, the armor plate <laughs> I think I went a bit overboard on the green on the palette. It's probably enough for three or four courts. Some of the, I've missed some bits of the light, um, the glowing green. I'd like to see them do more of these. I know they do a, um, a night haunt blue and another green in this stuff, but I don't think that, so, don't recall it being this bright. Okay, I do need to touch up some bits of that. And all you're going to need to do is hit some white onto the higher each, onto the high, higher parts, and that'll give it a fantastic glow effect. 
Imagine that on Necrons. green a bit stronger um, and def there's more quarts of higher higher types of uh, green to go over this yet don't think I'm going to do the lubrical on the straps I think I'll go in with the next layer for them Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I think the Night Haunts... Um, could do some really, really bright, garish Night Haunts. And I've got a few boxes of them kicking about from when... Uh, they did the cheap box... Uh, not the cheap box sets, the cheap... Start, I think, for... Flabled Realms... Yeah, Mortal Realms. <laughs> so, when I let that dry up a bit, in a coat there we go underneath just to get the edges done This, uh, cool, cool. No, no, that's worth doing. Um, uh, Dell. Also, use it. Have you read the instructions on your brushes about using it before you start using it as well? So, clean water. Give your brush a clean. Um, get the point on it after you've cleaned it. Pre you, you should always prepare your brush before you start using it as well. As well, just when you've bought them, so that there's a little sheet in them. So Dale's just bought. Hi Craig. Um, small world, eh? Uh, so broken toad midges brush. You get a nice little thing of what to do. Um, um, I did it in amongst. Uh, push me over the next couple of days, and I'll do a. a um. paint uh, a, a brush cleaning video for you but yeah 
Yeah, Craig. Uh, I started seeing Jo just as she left Gibbos. I think she was... Yeah, kick leave for more work. Yeah, she was. She just moved to Speed. Oh, was just in the process of moving from Gibbos to Speedies when I met her. Now that's going back some time. So. <laughs> I need some of the black on a smaller brush. She didn't last there long. I think she was only there for probably four or five months and um, she went on maternity leave and then we made, the de well, we made the decision for her not to go back to work and she took over ProTech from home back when it was doing remote control car stuff If it wasn't for Joe, I wouldn't have pushed myself into actually starting my own business and stuff like that. So, yeah, life changing to say the least. So for any of you that haven't seen, these are the new Broken Toad brushes that came out last week. We managed to get some off Chris. Uh, we've got some in stock as well. Jack's already hit the stock hard. He was the first one in that. Um, they're a version, they're, they're a synthetic version of his Kolonsky brushes. They are pretty good. Um, for what I'm doing here they're really useful because I can get them in and out of close areas uh, I still prefer his sable ones for doing um, detail work and stuff like that just the the flow of the paint seems a little bit a bit nicer on them these are quite stiff but it means that for this sort of work where you want a precise point of paint going down um, they're really good I really like that I really do That's... I think these would be really good for freehand work as well how did I manage to get that on there I haven't got any white out. Some white. So, while I've got the white out, um, yeah, some edge highlights on the the highest points of it. I'm just going to make it 
stand out a little bit. So have that thinned. Yeah, the fl again, me saying that the flow on that paint coming out of that is really, really good. I don't think so, sorry. So it's just making some of the green pop even more. Yes, um, Dale's just asked for exactly the same, Craig. I will definitely do that. Um, I did a I did a live stream where I showed Rachel and a couple of others on the day, and I didn't even think I should have done an actual tutorial. Um, it's how I look after mine. I don't know if it's how everyone else does, but uh, it's really easy. It's it's worth doing. I think Dale just nicked our last brush soap, so I'll be getting some more of that soon. Um, but the brushes, it goes down to what you're wanting to spend. There's some really, really expensive ones out there. Um, there's some, just some really good entry level or what we class as entry level brushes um, some really bad ones out there I won't mention any companies um, but we've got quite a selection now we tend to um, oh cool cheers Dale we've I'm going to let that dry a bit because I was dragging the green down with it. Uh, there's different types of brushes. There's um, synthetic and there's natural fiber, uh, natural hair. Uh, Broken Toad do now do both. I'll actually get one of the new boxes down. Watch me get a Mark II set. Marquis. So there is their Kolonsky range, which are really fantastic brushes. Uh, the way the paint, when you thin the paint down to do uh, blending or anything like that, as well as um, layering and stuff getting thin paint onto the the model these hold so much paint in the bristles they just they just work um i've had this is one of my workhorses i think i've had this over a year now it's probably my favorite brush it's my go-to brush um and it's one of the mark twos it's just the same as that one there um mark threes are the next year's batch that uh broken toad have done um so i have a Mark Three there. So that is a size two, but the point on that is phenomenal. And now I use this one for pin washing, and it's a size two. So the whole body of that holds the um, the wash in, and then I can just run it round the lines and it takes takes it for ages um i'm this may sound stupid but how are you storing the megan so if the tip starts to curl when you i'll go to the big view so basically Like that. Right. So this is something that I didn't realize when I first started using them. 
Um, eh, hello, so. 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 Uh, different mug, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the basic thing, and I'll, I will do a video on this because there's that many people have asked for it now. Um, I'll do it on a... What's this? This is my number one. So, I haven't got any clean water, so I apologize. I have. So, fill the brush with water, and then bring the so uh, bring the brush through the soap till you've basically got enough soap on it. You just be gentle. You don't have to rub and scrub yet. So you've got a fair amount. fair amount of soap on. You then, I use the center of my hand there, and I scrub it a bit. It does feel brutal, and if it is damaging to the brushes, then I've been doing it for years like this, so now you can see the, the dirt actually coming out, and the, this has just been cleaned, so it's not going to be too bad. So again, a bit more soap and good clean. So now we've got soap on a brush. Quick clean off in the water. Don't run it through your mouth like that. That's the bad way of doing it badly. Um, so with some water on, I would then use the V in your palm. So a little bit of water down it and then just use it and twist it. So twisting the brush through the V. Yeah. That'll if you're about to use it, that'll give you the point that you need to use it. You can see it there. If you're putting the brush away for the night, Egan, go back to your soap. Find some clean soap. Don't use dirty soap. Just find a little patch of clean. It goes like that. A little bit of water. Only a small amount, and then do exactly the same. Run it through your hand. Yep. Yeah. Till you've got the point back on there. Put it in your paint stand. Um, for my really, really good brushes, mine go back into the tube. Yeah. Like so. And I store them... Yes, leave the leave the um, soap on the brush. As long as it's clean soap, it's fine. But then, obviously, I've got that cover on. Now, I'll store it nose first. So, if there is water up in the bezel, um, and I'm start if I'm if I'm going to be using it in ten minutes time, I won't go that far. But if I'm putting them away and I'm going to use them for a couple of days, I'll store them like that. Uh, but that is my good brushes. If I cracked open a new set of these, they've got all of the covers on, and that's how I would start using them again. Um, I do get lax, and I end up just leaving them stood upright, and you can get water and um, paint going down into the bezel by doing it like that. It's just... It can happen. Um, but yeah, the soap will go hard um, here we go so uh, this is one of my rosemary's and look it's gone hard yeah so that's that was cleaned and that was put away but the point on it is absolutely fantastic yeah it has bent slightly because the soap. So, in the water, palm your hand. And it's gone soft again. But what's happened is while you haven't been using it, if you leave it stored like that, it'll stay like that. So if you put the soap on it, 
twist it through your hand slightly. Leave it like that, put it away. You put it away, the soap goes hard. It all goes back to the, the soapy, soapy goodness. But it, as soon as you clean it, it comes off and you're away again. It, it's done and it's good. Uh, so it's it, it's not just a soap, it's a conditioner as well, if that makes sense. And don't keep licking your brushes because that's disgusting habit. Make sure it says conditioning brush soap as well. Um, the conditioning side of it is the bit that's keeping it uh, keeping it nice and pointy. And I bet Dale didn't watch any of that at all. Nope, see, Dale's vanished. Missed out on that entire cleaning brush thing. So let's... <laughs> so, Dale, um, it is 131. So go back from 131. Two people ask in the stream how, how to clean the brushes. I'm so gracious and nice to them and help them out. And at least Egan was. <laughs> uh, cool. So you can see how the clock's gone um, quite nice now. So I've got the base colour down. Um, without telling my customer. Um, that I want to re do a really quick job of this. Um, well, you're going to have to start painting. I've said this before to people. If you get into painting, it becomes... As long as you're not trying to crack out half a army in two or three days... Um, it can be very, very therapeutic. Um, I used to do it because I enjoyed it. It used to calm me down. It used to chill me out. Um, it, it still does. It's just not as... <sighs> not as much now I, I do it as a, a job as well. But I still, like tomorrow... Um, I know I don't do commissions. But I have commissions left over and promises left over that I am working through. Um, so I've got bits and pieces to do tomorrow. So I'm having a painting day tomorrow. I'm going to kick back, sort, sort out the bits and pieces I need to in the morning. And then, um, I'm going to put something on Netflix, possibly. And sit back and chill out watching some. Eh, maybe some Marvel or stuff. So, all I'm doing here is we've got the recesses darkened up. So, what I'm going to do, hopefully, he says, is, yeah, that's picking it up. Um, do a green dry brush of um, Warp Stone Glow. going in that direction up the cloak So at the moment, if I catch this, I'm a bit upset, but I'm, I'm not too fussed about catching armor, catching the sword, the top part of the sword, because um, this part of it is, 
flex on them. Um, getting the base parts down, getting the bulk bits to the to a good position that I can start doing the the details and stuff like that. So again, this is one of our flat brushes. Um, we do need to have a look at getting some more stock of these back in. Uh, I think we'll low on some of them. So obviously because it's flat, it's hitting... Hitting the raised areas really nicely. So you get the... That shows up really well on the camera as well. Quite impressed with that. And that's just light dry brushing. There's, there's hardly any paint on there, as you can see from my thumb. There's only a smidge going over. But only a smidge going over and you rub it backwards and forwards 20, 30 times. What it does, it picks the highlighted part, the higher parts up. So if you run it down you're starting to put it on all of the figure whereas you run it across the the raised edges it rubs off on the uh the raised bits and not the the lower bits you can use this for edge highlighting as well so if you've got that edge there that you want highlighting if you just run, run that across the edge you get an edge highlight So running it all the way down it's a quick edge highlight so the whole cloak picks up a quick edge highlighting a dry brushing to get all of the the dark and light recesses So the other one I want to do is I just need to get in there as well. Let's see how much of that I can pick out. That's got it. So just the armor on there. So the question is how well Does it pick out the armor? That's actually pretty cool. So it's giving shading. So she's got um, like a black type leather one piece on but it's also got lots of green inlay which the dry brush because of it being flat is actually picking up really well and then I dare say I can go back in with the black and tidy up all of the the edges That actually looks quite cool. So all of the horns are in the green as well. So and obviously I'm gonna hit a face and stuff like that. The helmet's green, the face is not. Um so what I'll do with the face is go back in with my usual uh, flesh tones and build that back up over the green. Oh, there's a little spiky bit missing. Didn't notice that. <laughs> I 
that actually works better. Aha! Don't look, Foxy. Bits didn't fall off. Yeah, the um, Warpstone Glow over black gives... Um, it's, a, it's a really nice effect for uh, Dark Angels. Because the black's dark enough to... It darkens the green right up. So you get that sort of effect. <laughs> Um, it's actually going to work in I can get all the back of the neck and stuff now mate Thank you for the subscription. Thank you, Ulfric. Bob Ross, yeah, it is. All of the happy little accidents. driver shop. So what I'm going to do now is with exactly the same paint, the warp stone, I'm going to look for my brush that I love. There it is. Right, number one. Um, how long have I been painting? An hour and a half. Well, we had a big chat at the start, so an hour. Uh, grab some of the Warpstone Glow on my palette. And what I'm definitely going to do is pick up the basically all of the straps where and again, it's quite thin but because you've already hit it with the um, the dry brush the dry brush helps you see where all the the, the green needs to go properly uh, but if you do it like a glaze and quite thinly it holds some of the the recesses and the dips and the, the Basically, the stuff that the um, dry brush picked up, it highlights it a bit. So you get the, if you've got a crack in, say, the belt or something like that, it picks it up. And it doesn't, um, doesn't just fill it all with uh, green paint. This is where I normally get asked off Martin. Uh, how long is too long spending time painting female boobs? Isn't it, Martin?
So even if you miss, I'm going to be going back over the black. Uh, so even if I, I catch some of the um, the black bits now, it's not too much of an issue. Because I need to put there's, there's bits and pieces that have picked up quite a bit too much. But uh, the benefits outweigh the having to redo it slowly. Has she got? She has. It's slightly faded. The benefit of doing it really light as well, and like a, there we go. Um, doing it like a glaze is you do three or four coats to get it to the colour you want. If you're getting to the point where you think you're doing it too much you can just stop and leave it at the the level that you've done it at whereas if you go for one thick coat when you go oh that was too much you're already too far gone on the sword yet but there's a stripe there picking out all of the stripes and all of the dark green work I thought it was going to be a lot harder than that but as you say a happy little accident picking out the dry brush slightly by mistake and then seeing it picking out all of the dry brush still need to do a butt um, there's a bit missing there's a big patch under there that's um, still in the white. And ah, the back needs doing. Do apologize. So, yes, to get the black now is I'm going back in with the primer black uh, because it matches the primer that was. Uh, thinning it down with Army Painters um, Airbrush Medium. We've been using this to thin everything that we've been doing lately. It's a really good product. I know Paul's just started using it as well. So the paint is quite thin and quite flowy to get all of these panels. You don't have to get them perfectly back, back. <coughs> excuse me, back to black. But what you can do is get them shaded down enough so the green doesn't look anywhere near the same as the banding that you've done. Let me see on the leg. And again, the black coats pretty much anything so you can rub out your mistakes very easily with the black rather than having to be very careful with the green you can be a little bit I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't say slack 
just a little bit. Uh, I don't know what a good word for it is. Yeah, picking the panels up one by one. So that leg panel there has a lot because it's right on the where you would catch it a lot. bringing it back to the black and as you can see that's really easy it caught the green that's just the uh, dry brush and I've said before one of the easiest parts of not the easiest part but one one of the eye-opening parts of painting is when you start seeing the layers and the quick ways of getting like certain colors done without having to like do a lot of work um, sometimes outweighs the ease of doing um, doing it the careful way so like the dry brush there the dry brush to pick all of that up offsetted by uh, 10 minutes of going over picking up all of the bits where you've caught it um, and there'd be a good chance you would be cleaning those bits up that you'd caught anyway because the shaky arms and missing bits and that sort of stuff and missing big <laughs> Chicken nuggies. That really does look close to what she looks like on the uh, the box art as well. I'm quite impressed with. I do believe she's missing a finger though, Foxy. Uh, 
I thought it was only Thor that lost um, body parts during that fight. Why, thank you. So the finger comes out. I've got a bit of stump. That's fine. Um, it could be something as simple as it didn't get moulded. I've seen it before. There well, I've seen it a few times on bits and pieces. It's a tiny little. Like looking at the box, there's a stump there, but I don't know if that's meant to be. There we go. It's as close as I can get to. It looks fine. Nothing to worry about, Matt. So just right at the base, just putting some a couple of dark tints in. These should probably disappear next to nothing. Just to darken up some of the recesses right at the bottom of the, the wispy stuff. Just seen the eyes on this. That's going to be interesting. Because obviously your eyes are behind the mask, but the mask's showing through the. Uh, yeah, they'll be interesting to get done. Yeah, the uh, I've had a cape come out like that before. Um, it was a chaplain, and it was just something the um, the plastic or the I'm just mixing some white by the way. Um, the plastic or the first coat of primer just had like a slightly textured. Um, these are pound shop glasses, um, and they are way, way more magnified than my normal glasses. So, three points, three point five easy readers, and I think my normal glasses are twos. So these are are just glasses that I use for the 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 fine stuff, the close up stuff. 
Um, but I still struggle with, I always have struggled with eyes. So I'm just running a white glaze. And all, all that is, is the original white paint uh, and it's thinned down to a water. So when you're trying to put um, white over stuff, you normally end up getting nothing and it looks washed out and well that's what you're aiming for on the top of this so around the top edges you're trying to make it look washed out just so some of the wisps have a bit of white to the edge and it, it is really thinned again just using the army painter um, uh, medium and any white um, I just picked up what was nearest it is it is the army paint it's the army paint of white that I'm using it when you're thinning it this far it's the medium that counts more than the actual paint So you just look for sharp spots, bright spots, where you you just think that poof, that bit's going to be bright and do that bit. And whoever donated, thank you for the donation, old Rick. I missed that. Sorry, Matt. That is my bad. So again just picking up and it is really the paint looks really thin when it goes on and it's not going to give it makes it quite translucent so you, I don't know if you can see there at the top it's gone almost back to green in some of the places um, and only the tips of it are actually wispy and white thing is when you're putting it on that thin if you go back to it and you haven't done enough you haven't ruined anything you can put a little bit more back on um, the only time that you start to get annoyed is when you've actually gone straight in and gone too too much to start with sword is dark metal so I will pick that out with some dark metal oh, I will have two minutes I ooh, didn't realize the time um, I'll do the sword and then I think we'll be calling it a day what is the darkest metal that I've got Jet exhaust. Who would have known it? <laughs> Jet exhaust and exhaust manifold are my two favourite silvers. Yeah, it's uh, nine o'clock here, and I've still got uh, two. Just two of them. At least um, I've set myself a task of doing twenty listings a day on the shop of secondhand products. So. Uh, I'm still 20 short for today, so after the stream, I will be going and doing some listings for Legion, some new stock. So, that's the sword. 
So again, these paints are very thin, very controllable, and the coverage is fantastic. Um, as I've said before, there's only one. I've not come across paint or metallic silver paints with this kind of coverage since the Army Painter. Um, release plate mail silver and that again that's another I've actually run out of it because I keep putting it through the airbrush um, but that's another fantastic uh, silver so these are the bits where taking your time and being a little bit careful and just keeping everything as still as possible and not breathing uh, to get the sword without hitting any of the flowy material so again the benefits of this very very thin paint is you can coax it into where you want it to go I'm I know Snowy's had a go at me as well and says you've got a horde of Titanicus but Fancy repainting Titanicus, I do. So there. So I'll oh. I'll only do half the sword then, Lee. Foxy will never notice. Who looks at the back of miniatures? So it does have a lot of intertwinings of the um, the green smoke coming from a hand. Well, I don't know if you can see it. We managed to get it quite the blend quite well because I got the white up onto it, and it's gone through quite nicely. So, now I've done the silver. So yeah, give me a week to get over my in Indomitus and we'll, we'll get a starter set each and start from scratch, mate. I just don't, that stuff that I've got, I'll just put up for sale and then we can start a fresh, um, fresh models, Fresh colours, fresh everything. Uh, I'll stick that on there once all that paint's dry. Um, so that's where we're at so far. I'll get a bit more done. She'll be on my board, so I'll get a bit more done here and there. Um, oops. So, I'll try some before we disappear. Before we disappear. Um, <sighs> yeah, I'm still a bit. 
it's probably just me again, but... Hello, Tomo! <laughs> it it was a uh, um we're just covering for uh Rasta his uh he couldn't do a stream tonight so we've stepped in and helped out so i've just used some of my super white um this is massively pigmented uh chimera colors um and they will probably kill me if they ever found out that I'm using their white for dry brushing. But it's just so good. Where's my glasses? I just want to check some up before. Uh... Oh. So what I've done is a very light high pigmented um, dry brush across oh, a little bit too much take it back oh, there's a lump of that mm, that's not too bad actually so that dry brush might have actually been a little bit better than doing the yeah because it's now popping a lot more with that dry brush. Nice emojis, mate. <laughs> clean the dry brush yet again so yeah um it might have been a bit quicker for me just to go up and straight across with the the white dry brush but she looks pretty good i hope the person that it's for is happy i said i've got i've got the face to do i've got bits to put back on basing to do um i will have it probably on the live stream on wednesday um it, might not be done it might be done i've got these two guys to finish off tomorrow uh that one to finish off tomorrow <laughs> iden verso to finish off tomorrow um lots to finish off tomorrow uh, all to get up on the protec website as soon as possible as so we're putting at least 20 new listings a day up on their second hand um Secondhand Legion. We've got secondhand X-wing. We've just we've just got a load of it in. Secondhand 40k. Secondhand 30k. Fox is going to come on early onto um, Discord, and we're going to send out lots of emails to lots of companies to ask them for stuff for the uh, upcoming charity event. I knew the time it was lagging so um so yes i've really enjoyed painting that um we'll get that <laughs> we'll get that all sorted um i'll just come back out a little bit so everyone can see the table oh it looks like a spider spider get it um again 19 people on at the end of the stream that's absolutely fantastic uh, we used to, um, when I first started this we were used to like five or ten people kicking about but now we're up to a total of 20 which is really good so uh, I'm going to call it there thank you everyone for coming thanks for the subscriptions the follows, the likes the donations, everything uh, we'll be back we have a giveaway on Wednesday uh again and hopefully we'll have some more nice shiny things to paint uh so thank you everyone once again uh stay safe and i will catch you all soon good night
I'm back because I pressed the wrong button. 